So this is our first video in proving trig identities. And so most of the time students, the first time they get into proofs like officially is in like a geometry class where you're doing two column proofs. You're proving that, you know, opposite or excuse me, you're like using CPCTC that comes up a lot. You're proving that two triangles are congruent, stuff like that. So it's kind of similar but kind of a lot different. And uh, really what this is, is it's almost like putting a puzzle together. But rather than just kind of randomly throwing pieces together, you try to use some, some intuition and use your brain a little bit to say, well, what would be the smartest way to put this puzzle together? So um, I want to run through four examples here. And I think one of the best ways to learn this is just keep trying and keep doing examples. And so we're going to do some of that. Also, I want you to know that sometimes you're going to go down a dead end, and that's okay. Uh, sometimes you have to rip your paper out, crumple it up, throw it in the trash, and say, well, don't throw it in the trash. Just cross it out, because then you can look back and see what didn't work. But sometimes you're going to go down a path, and in some of these videos, I'm going to go down a wrong path intentionally to show you, shoot, you know, this isn't going to work uh, out as well as we had hoped. So... Here's example one. Hopefully you had time to write this down with my long monologue there. We're going to prove that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, all of that divided by cosine of theta equals secant theta. So all what we're trying to show is that all of this big mess here, this big messy fraction, if we do some of the stuff like wave our magic wand, not really, we're going to use the identities, but if we do that, it's going to eventually end up looking just like that. So one thing we learned is this stuff. I'm going to get rid of that white line here. Is These are the main trig identities that we looked at in the first video of our trig identities uh, unit here. And so what we want to do is use some of these to eventually get it so that we get down to just secant of theta. So what I want you to do whenever you're doing these types of problems is I always start with I write down one of the sides and I, I, you know, I start there, and then I do some stuff, and then I end up with the answer. So in between the start here and the end here, we're going to be doing some steps so that we can eventually end at secant of theta. Okay, I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here. So I want to look at the original problem, and I want to say, is there anything on there that I can change using these trig identities? And one thing I noticed is that, whoopsie, let's undo that. We'll scroll up a little bit again. Is that sine squared plus cosine squared is right there. And what does that equal? It equals one. So what I can do is I can change sine squared plus cosine squared into one. So that's my first step in this proof. And then uh, my next step is to say, well, can I get, how can I get closer to the answer of, of secant? Well, hey, guess what? We got it, right? One over cosine is secant. So we can change one over cosine into secant. And now that I've showed that secant equals secant, boom, we're done. So uh, typically in proofs, you'll see somebody draw a rectangle and fill it in. Uh, if you want to be much less formal, I'm going to put a smiley face. That's a terrible smiley face. Let's try to fix that. There we go. Uh, by no means will any math professor in a college accept a smiley face. You might want to get used to doing that. But if you want to brighten your day, you can put a smiley face when you're done because, hey, it's fun. All right. Let's look at example two here. So we want to show that this stuff over here will eventually give us tangent squared. So I'm going to pull up the, there we go, identities again. And I want to start with what's given to me and eventually hopefully get down to tangent squared. So let's write this out. We're going to write out secant of theta, parentheses secant of theta, minus cosine of theta. And... Right now, it doesn't equal tangent squared, but I want to prove that it will eventually equal tangent squared. 
So there's multiple things we could do. I could look at this and say, well, secant is 1 over cosine, so I could change those. But I think what I'm going to do instead uh, is I'm going to distribute. It just screams distribute me right now. So I'm going to distribute that secant into both things. So we're going to have secant squared theta minus secant theta times cosine of theta. Okay. So let's see. I've got secant squared minus the secant theta times cosine of theta. Well, now I think I'm going to use this one that I looked at. I said that secant is 1 over cosine. So I'm going to change that secant right there. I'm going to leave the secant squared alone. And you'll see why in a second. Maybe you're already seeing why I'm doing this. But it, I'll tell you why, rather than making it a secret. I want to get closer to that Pythagorean identity because that has tangent squared, which is what we want. And I already have secant squared. So if I can get one, then we're going to be pretty darn close. So let's see here. Um, secant squared, oh, sorry, secant theta is 1 over cosine times cosine of theta. Well, uh, the nice thing is 1 over cosine times cosine, those cancel each other out, so we get secant squared theta. Oops, that's an ugly theta. Let's try that again. Minus, well, 1 over cosine times cosine is just 1. And guess what? If you remember, in our first video, I rearranged this. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get tangent squared theta equals secant. Can't write today. Let's try that again. Secant squared theta minus 1. And I have secant squared theta minus 1. So I can change that to tangent squared theta. And that does equal what we want. And so, oh, man, ugly thetas today. Boom, we're done. Once we get our left side to equal what we want on the right side, we've got our proof done. Now, one thing that's going to be somewhat tempting as we move along here is wanting to work with both sides. And you cannot do that in a proof. You have to stick with one side. When I say stick with one side, I mean if you're going to work on the left side of what's given, so in this case, we were given this stuff. I want to eventually show that that turns into tangent squared. You could start with tangent squared and eventually turn it into the stuff on the left. That's just going to be a little bit more tricky. But you have to work with just one side of the original problem. All right. So there is example two. We've got two more here. Here's example three. As always, I encourage you to pause it and see if you can figure this out on your own now. If you feel like you're not ready yet, at least pause it and write it down. So let's see here. I've got a tangent theta, a sine theta, and a cosine theta. And I want to eventually get to 1 minus cosine squared. Oh, boy. All right. Well, let's see what we can do here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to change this tangent here because I see some sines and some cosines. So I'm going to change tangent into the first thing we learned, which was sine theta over cosine theta. All right. So I started with the left, and I'm going to eventually hopefully show that it equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. Uh, let's see. So if I multiply, these are all fractions, by the way. I just didn't write them over 1. But So if I multiply fractions, what I get on top is sine times sine times cosine. So if I have sine times sine, I can write that as sine squared. Uh, it's just cosine theta. And then on bottom, I have cosine theta times 1 times 1. So that's just cosine theta. Well, this is kind of nice. Since they're multiplied together, I can cancel out the cosines. So now, let's see, equals, equals sine squared theta. Well, that would be nice if the left was, or if the right was just sine squared theta, but it's actually 1 minus cosine squared. But, like we looked at before, let's pull this up here. If we look at the 
first Pythagorean identity, if I subtract cosine squared theta on both sides, minus cosine squared theta, I get sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine squared theta. And that's what we're looking for, right? So that's kind of slick. Uh, sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine squared theta. So we just proved that the left side does equal 1 minus cosine squared theta. And we're done. So as you've kind of seen through three examples here, you want to use these identities that we've learned and try to manipulate the one side. Usually it's the left side, but sometimes you might work with the right side. Uh, manipulate the one side until you eventually end up with what's on the right. And then your proof is done. Okay, last example. Cotangent of theta times cosine of theta plus sine of theta. All of that stuff will just break down to cosecant of theta. Okay, as I said before, I encourage you to pause it, at least write it down. But if you think you can give this one a shot, I'd highly encourage you to try to give it a shot on your own. Um, and if you get stumped, then just hit play again and, and I'll help you through it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to start by pulling up these identities again. And I don't see anything squared here, so I'm going to, not that that means I'm not going to use these, but I'm going to try to not use the Pythagorean identities unless it comes up later on in the problem, which it might. Okay, um, so let's see, cotangent is not in terms of, everything else is kind of in terms of sine and cosine, so maybe what I'll do is I will use this one, and I'll, I'll change cotangent into cosine theta over sine theta. You could use that one, but then nothing's really going to cancel out, so that might be kind of a mess. Um, you cannot use this Pythagorean identity because that one has to have cotangent squared, and we don't have cotangent squared. We have just cotangent. So you can't get rid of the squares. You can only use it if it's got a square with it. Um, one other thing while I'm at it is sine of theta plus cosine of theta does not equal 1. That's not an identity. You can't just square root everything and say it works. That would kind of be like saying uh, if we have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, is that true? So 3, is, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, is 9 plus 16 25? Yep, it is. So what if I said, well, I'm just going to square root both sides, then it's also true. Is 3 plus 4 equal to 5? And the answer is, is no, it's not. It's equal to 7, right? So um, you cannot just drop the squares and call it good. All right, so let's get back into this. Sorry, I kind of monologued there for a while. Um, cotangent, we're going to write as cosine theta over sine theta. And then we still have the times cosine theta and plus sine theta. Okay, so we started there. And then I've got two fractions that are being multiplied together. So I'm going to multiply those next and see what happens. We've got a cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared over sine theta plus sine of theta. All right, so I'm kind of in a mess here. Let's see. Well, one thing I could do is I could think of these as fractions, and I could get a common denominator. So that, that might work. Let's see here. If I multiply by sine of theta on top and bottom, what do we get? We've got, excuse me, cosine squared theta over sine theta plus sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta over sine theta. I feel like I'm just getting it more messy. Um, but I have a common denominator, so now I can add these fractions. And so what does that give me? That gives me cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta over sine, because we have a common denominator. 
Well, um, it looks messier, but actually we're really, really darn close to the answer. For the rest of your life, when you see cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, or flipped around sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, you should think automatically that that equals 1 every time. So the nice thing is the top we got to just 1. And guess what? What is 1 over sine theta? That is cosecant of theta. How cool is that? And that's what we were looking for. They said get it down to cosecant theta. We did in just 500 short steps. And boom, we're done. So four examples in the books. Yes, it might be a little daunting. The more you do with this, the better you're going to be. Uh, once again, sorry for the long-winded video here. But uh, more practice, more examples is definitely going to make you better mathematician with this stuff.